Good morning. Like to welcome everyone here on this really, really gorgeous day. So before we start, um, let me uh, first off welcome everybody here, and then um, special welcome to the third and fourth grade from Holy Redeemer School. Um, for the adults here, certainly we're glad you're here. For the uh, young people, the third and fourth graders, let me talk a little bit about what's going to happen here. This is both a, a solemn event because 22 years ago uh, the uh, tragedy happened, but it's also a celebration of the American spirit and the resiliency and recovering from that. So the uh, this park was developed 10 years after that event happened. And of course the centerpiece of that is one of the beams from the tower. So after the program, you're all invited to come up. And if you have questions, or some, some of us that will be around that can maybe answer your questions about all the things that are in this park. So, so that was, uh, the event was 22 years ago. This park happened, uh, was developed, and it was uh, opened 10 years after that event. And of course, we've had a celebration here and a program here every year after that. So that's a little bit about what will go on. So with that, um, we'll start the formal part of the program. I'd like to introduce uh, uh, Bernie Wing, a retired pastor, and he will give our opening prayer. Bernie. Thank you, Mayor. Let's bow our hearts in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the goodness and grace and mercy of a God who has not left us alone, but you have sent your Holy Spirit to be with us. You promise that you will never leave us or forsake us. Thank you, Lord, that we live in a country that has the, the patriotism and the heroism to see the freedoms that we enjoy and around the world, that we are your servants to protect freedom. We ask for your Holy Spirit to continue to encourage us and strengthen us with resolve to come together as one nation under God, unable to be divided. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank, thank you, Pastor Wing. I now invite you to uh, face the flag, um, stand, remove your hats if you're, and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now I ask Ellie Sprick to come forward and she will join us in God Bless America. Will you join me? God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above, from the mountains to the prairies, to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my Thank you, Ellie. I would now uh, ask uh, Director of Public Safety Jim Marshall and Marshall Fire Chief Quentin Brunsvold to present the, the American Spirit Wreath.
Thank you. Our guest speaker is uh, Kelly Wasberg, member of the Marshall community. He's with Minnesota National y Guard. He's a lieutenant colonel and chaplain in the 1st Battalion, 101st, 51st uh, Field Artillery, based here in Marshall. He's also the chaplain at Avera um, and also a member of the Marshall Fire Department. With that, Kelly. Thank you, Mayor. Well, the theme for this day over the years has often been either never forget or remember. It's a very fitting posture to take as we gather and as you accept with me the sacred honor of pausing to remember and pledging to rebuild with courage and love. One of the most remarkable things about folks, especially in places of a long ways from big cities or places like Marshall and Cottonwood and Minneota and Garvin and wherever you're from, is how people embrace that sacred trust. I've seen it my entire life. The sacred trust of honoring our fallen, no matter how dark the world becomes, regardless of how much evil has touched us or our loved ones. Because communities and loved ones will remember our fallen, no matter how long they've been gone. Because not even death can destroy love nor can evil overwhelm our faith in God, each other, our nation. It can't blunt our courage to rise from the ashes of whatever happens. So these watchwords today, remember and honor, will ring true in this country for as long as loved ones are missed, or until our last day comes, whichever comes first, and that simply means forever. So I'm grateful to pause with you today on this beautiful morning for just a few moments to regard the immeasurable value of human life, of lives lost and lives boldly lived and honorably lived since that one of the worst days our country has faced, the 11th of September, 2001. So today I do ask you to remember again what took place that day, the fear as well as the courage to honor those who responded and to never forget the rivers of sorrow and the canyons of grief that were opened that day when we lost so many so suddenly. You know, chaplains in the Army have centered their mission around three things. The first is we are called to nurture the living. That's what they send us to do. We are also called to care for the wounded whenever that happens, both in mind, body, and spirit. And lastly, we are called to honor the fallen. And while it's, while it's always good to pause and remember and honor, I'm going to ask you to do something in addition to that today. Somebody that, something that anybody can do at any time, anywhere. It is something that is very commonly practiced, but maybe not enough, by those who do run into harm's way, those who move toward explosions or run into, the, into gunfire. But it's also practiced by those who've been through some turmoil and trials. Those who were gripped, that the trials that gripped our nation and changed us forever that day. What I'm asking you to practice beginning today and always is what so many of those heroes and victims and those who loved them did and still do every day. You'll recall as history recorded it in America, it was morning and it was beautiful, very much like today. Parents were uh, putting kids on buses, dropping their kids off. Workers were filing into buildings Nurses were beginning their rounds. Carpenters were, were gathering their tools. Other folks were starting their day. See, what I want to encourage you to do today and every day is what I think most of those victims and heroes did consistently the day before 9-11-2001. And it's what we need to do always today as we remember and as we honor, as we step into what often seems like a, a messy future. It's something that those born since 9-11, which is a lot of you young folks here this morning, and those who've lived since then rebuilding this nation need to practice consistently to honor those who've, who we've lost. So I'm asking you to add this daily practice to your mental gymnastics and self-talk. 
It's not complicated. It's not always easy to do, but I will tell you that it can be contagious, and it is more effective than you might expect. It is free. It's universal. It, you don't need any special training or skill. It can be used by anyone at any given time and any setting, any conversation. It doesn't require translation or interpretation. This practice completely ignores, thankfully, politics. It can frustrate personal agendas. It can change caustic narratives. And it is practiced by people of faith and patriots. Are you ready for it? Will you give it a chance? Will you make it a habit and join millions of folks who've learned the secret of facing fears and coping with darkness and discord and evil? I'll regard, regard your silence as yes. The most amen I'll probably get today. This contagious, effective, simple, universal, and I would add God-given practical advice and practice is called gratitude. Simply practice gratitude. Find something or someone to be grateful for, no matter how plain or ordinary or boring or terrifying life becomes. Appreciate what or, more importantly, who you have around you. The country you live in. Or what you may have coming in the mail that you've ordered. Or waiting on your steps or in your backyard when you get home or perhaps in your refrigerator when you come home to get a bite. Or that favorite spot at the lake or that person you can't get out of your mind because you love them so much. You can have gratitude for a loved one, obviously, a friend, a, a pet, or a really good sandwich. It might be a comfy hoodie that you put on regularly. It might even be an annoying neighbor or two, or coworker or relative. I told you it wouldn't be easy all the time. Appreciate them anyway. Try practicing gratitude. I dare you. It's one of the only effective, powerful antidotes to the discord, the strife, and the wrangling mess that characterizes this goofy and beautiful and challenging and ever-expanding world country we call home. I guarantee you it helps. See, the people going to work or school or the library or the grocery store on the 11th of September 22 years ago likely practiced what we so easily forget. They were just doing their thing, and most of them, I would guess, with at least a healthy do dose of appreciation for the folks they loved, for those who loved them, for the country they live in, and the promise of more good days than bad and a few great days once in a while. So I encourage you today, as you remember, as you honor, to let gratitude shape the way you do it. As we remember those who have fallen, those who love them still, because it's one of the most precious things that if ever given the chance to express it again, those who've gone before us, whether victims or heroes, would encourage us to practice again for as long as we have the breath to do it, to appreciate. You can almost hear them say, be grateful for who you have in your life. Be humble as to how you got what you've been given. And be thankful that you were alive to be entrusted with the sacred honor today of remembering the fallen, nurturing the living, and caring for the wounded. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kelly. As we close, let me just say a couple other things. Those of you that have been here uh, for the past uh, number of years on the celebration probably are familiar with some of the symbolism, but if you're not, right here on that placard is an explanation of some of the symbolism here, all the way from the beam, which is tilted. You can kind of see it's tilted slightly towards New York to the uh, circular patterns, to the, um, the uh, Kasoda stones, and you can see that they start and they get larger, which is representative of the events that were happening in the world prior to 9-11, as well as the circular pattern. And then also some of the 
uh, patterns that we have, including the Pentagon pattern that would be uh, in the concrete, as well as the agate stone that is called blood red agate, which uh, if it's wet, it turns bright red. A lot of that and more, as well as the uh, as the bricks that represent the 2,977 victims of the event. So, with that, I thank all of you for being here and invite you to spend some time, some quiet time here at Memorial Park. Thank you.